You're listening to Health Professional Radio with Wayne Buckler. My guest today is Kate Swoffer. Kate is co-founder and chair of Dementia Alliance International and joins us to talk about what it is that Dementia Alliance International does. Kate, welcome to the program. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, I have to confess I've not heard of Dementia Alliance International before we tracked you down for an interview. So tell us what it is that you do. Well, Dementia Alliance International is a not-for-profit group that is an advocacy and support group of, by and for people with dementia. So previously, um, the only groups that were advocating for people with dementia have been either the advocacy organisations such as Alzheimer's Australia or Alzheimer's Disease International, um, but their membership is not specifically for people with dementia. And predominantly, those organisations started out as carers' organisations, so they do have a lot of support for carers, but very little uh, support for people with dementia. There was a group in about 2000 that set up that was meant to be originally a, a group exclusive to people with dementia, but they allowed membership in of other people, including family carers. So there's only about one third membership of that group um, is actual people with dementia. So a group of us from around the world decided to set up this group, this advocacy and support group exclusive to people with dementia. So we've been in existence since the 1st of January last year. Now, Kate. The perception that I have of people who are living with dementia comes from the way it's portrayed on television and uh, and in other media. What is it like in reality? Well, in reality, many of us around the world living with dementia are living good, productive lives. We're living with increasing disabilities caused by the symptoms of dementia. We're also been diagnosed with what is a terminal illness and there are about 130 different types or causes of dementia, dementia simply being an umbrella term. But just like with any other disease, rarely are we diagnosed at end stage or close to death. Uh, Most people are diagnosed in the early to middle stages of the disease where actually many of the symptoms, if we support them like disabilities, which is what they are, Um, have learnt to function in different ways and still contribute really well to society. The media insists on um, the discourse of tragedy and suffering and we really object to that because we're not all suffering. We suffer some of the time, but we're not all sufferers. And and I guess it's important that there is someone to to advocate for that view and I guess that's uh, Dimensional Arts International. That's definitely, we advocate very strongly for that, but a lot of the advocacy organisations around the world, there's been dementia language guidelines as far back as 2008, which came from Alzheimer's Ireland. Alzheimer's Australia um, had the next set of language guidelines. Um, Other countries have followed, uh, Alzheimer's Australia followed up last year with an updated version of language guidelines, but as far back as 2008, these guidelines have been saying, please don't call us sufferers. And yet even the advocacy organisations that publish the guidelines often still call us sufferers. So very hard to get money from uh, anywhere if we don't look like sufferers. That's being a bit cynical, but that's the reality. Yes, and inevitably there is never enough money to go around all the things that are required. And it's always a matter of choice for funding bodies and governments. Um, but having having a united voice is, is one of the things that seems to work well for a lot of organisations. Most of our audience, Kate, are clinicians of one kind or another. About uh, 95% of them are you know, doctors, nurses, allied health professionals in two categories. We get a lot in acute care in hospitals and we get a lot in aged care. What's the message for them today as a result of having heard you talking with us? What would you like them to take away? Well, I think the message for all clinicians, and I've been advocating this both as an individual and also through Dementia Alliance International, is that, number one, I'm advocating really hard around the world to change our post-diagnostic pathway of care. For example, when I was 49, diagnosed with dementia, mother of two, student at university, working full-time, I was told that the next day I should give up work give up study, get my end of life affairs in order, 
get acquainted with aged care and go home and live for the time I had left. Now, if I'd had a stroke age 49, a recoverable stroke, I would have been rehabilitated back to work, if possible. So there was no rehab for me and there is no rehab being offered to people with dementia, which when I put my old nurse's clinician's hat on, that's actually unethical to tell us to go home and die. And the other thing I'd really like clinicians to take away from today is that the language that they use about us is extremely important. And if they keep using negative, demeaning labels when they talk about us or when they write us up in case notes, then that's actually often the way we get treated. So we need positive, empowering and enabling language that we find respectful. Now, Kate, you were diagnosed at what I think is, is uh, quite an, an early age. Is that uncommon? Is, or is, can you fill us in on how the shift in the community? Well, in Australia, for example, there are over 340,000 people diagnosed with dementia. And within that group, there's about 25,800 people with younger onset dementia, which is anyone under the age of 65. So um, there are people as young as uh, in their 20s and 30s who have dementia. They're often the rarer genetic forms of dementia. And I think that the research says that younger onset dementia tends to be more likely the rare genetic ones or the frontotemporal dementia. Um, but with there being almost 130 types or causes, of which Alzheimer's disease makes up somewhere between 60 and 80 percent, depending on which data you read. Um, but even within Alzheimer's, so just like the word fruit, and there's lots of different types of fruits, and then even with apples, there's different types of apples. Mm -hmm. Dementia is exactly like that. So there's different types of Alzheimer's even. Um, but uh, you know, it is more rare that people under 65 have dementia, but it's it's less common than what we would have thought. Um, I worked, ironically, I worked in the first dedicated dementia unit in South Australia back in the 70s as a nurse, and I had no idea that younger people got dementia. So when I was being tested, uh, when I went to my doctor with problems with uh, acquired dyslexia and some memory issues and some comprehension and word finding issues, in no way, shape or form did I imagine it was going to be dementia. So it's very unexpected for younger people. Yes, I can believe it would be. Now, Kate, is, is there a misconception about dementia that we can help dispel? Is there a, a misconception that you know keeps you awake at night? Well, I, I think the biggest misconception is probably the way we're talked about and the misconception that everybody with dementia is end stage. So we we as people with dementia constantly hear stories, read blogs, read articles, read books, uh, you know, that we're feeding away the long goodbye, these awful negative uh, representations of people, you know, who are not there. Actually, we're still here. We are changing. We're changing in ways that might be different to the way you're changing, but we're still all here. We still have a voice. And often even people who are very advanced in the disease, if we find ways to listen to them, if we take the time to listen to them, often we can still communicate with them. Yes, and with a little bit of luck today, we'll help with that misconception just a little bit. How can people get in touch with you, Kate? Is there a website they can go to? There is. So www.infodai.org or for people with dementia, www.joindai.org. So people with dementia can join up. It's free. We run weekly support groups all around the world. We're starting a support group next week with some people with dementia from Nigeria. Um, so we're in a lot of countries in the world now. Um, and people without dementia who work in the field or who are interested or who have family members can sign up to our weekly blogs and our newsletter. And we run... Um, monthly online webinars. So this month we've got Professor Stephen Sabat presenting on the selfhood and dementia. He's an, an eminent professor of psychology from um, America. Uh, last month we had uh, Mr. Glenn Reese, who was 
and is currently chair of Alzheimer's Disease International, gave a really good presentation on the kind of global perspectives of dementia at the moment. So each month we have presentations that are open to anyone to come and um, to watch, just like attending a seminar, except that it's just through your computer online. And then we have a, a YouTube channel with an enormous amount of data and material on there, uh, which are with, um, videos and interviews of people with dementia about all sorts of different topics. And they're very handy for training, but they're also really useful for people newly diagnosed. So some of the conversations there are, I've just been diagnosed, the conversation with my family, for example, um, and their presentations made by people with dementia. You're listening to Health Professional Radio with Wayne Buckler and I've just been in conversation with Kate Slopper, the co-founder and chair of Dementia Alliance International, and we've just been talking about some of the work that Dementia Alliance International does around the world. And of course, you can listen to HPR on any one of our 30 stations around the world, and you'll be able to hear Kate on there in our archives. So if you just missed our conversation... We have a transcript on our website and we have an audio archive on YouTube and on SoundCloud and you can also find us on the social media channels. Our website's www.hpr.fm. Kate, thank you for sharing your time with me today. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And, uh, and good luck with Dementia Alliance International. I think it's a splendid initiative and I hope it does grows and flourishes for you. I think maybe the final statistic might be worth just adding in here. There are currently almost 47 million people with dementia around the world and the current new global rate is a new person diagnosed with dementia somewhere in the world every 3.2 seconds. This is a problem that we need to pay more attention to, I think. Absolutely. And uh, as we talked about during our interview, um, some better processes post-diagnosis. This is Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler. Thank you for being with us today. Do head off to our archive where you can hear the interview with Kate Slotter.